they're spending too much money, they have a debt, the country's bankrupt, and they won't admit the truth, so they have to come up with a gimmick to solve our problems. And uh, the Democrats have decided that the gimmick should be build back better. That'd be good. I think there's some things that we that we could do that. I think uh, in, in, uh, in the sense of our society, uh, we could do a much better job. I think we could build back better if we had more integrity among our public officials. And uh, I, I think that uh, uh, there's lots of things that could be done to improve our country, but that's not what they're talking about. Mm-hmm. They're talking about how to justify a lot more spending because that's what's holding things up there. They passed one bill, which was small compared to the $7 trillion that they want. So uh, we can be assured, and they admit it, uh, build, better, uh, build, build Back Better does involve trillions and trillions of dollars. And uh, those who want to spend are heroes among the people who can't wait to get hold of some of that, that money. And, uh, and yet nobody seems to really want to analyze it. How, how did we tear this place apart? Why are we in such trouble? You know, is it because we spent too much money overseas and get involved in too many military operations? Quite possibly that could be a major element. But, but also maybe, uh, maybe in the effort to be generous uh, with people who are having a bad time and you have to have a safety net, maybe we are spending too much money on people who uh, have to be protected against, uh, you know, any type of downturn. But, uh, but then again, that, that has been compounded with the fact that uh, some Americans are coming up short on their bailouts and their benefits because everybody who comes into the country illegally, at least it, the reports show that it looks like they're getting a better deal than American citizens. And uh, for, for people to say, well, yeah, there's tough, uh, there's tough problems out there, but all we have to do is have a great slogan, build back better. And that is restore us to our great, uh, you know, our great empire, uh, financially and politically and militarily. But uh, quite frankly, I think uh, we have a problem. I think that uh, technically speaking, we are bankrupt. I think we're morally bankrupt. I think we're uh, financially bankrupt. And about all they can do now is say, print more and more money. So if you look at uh, uh, build, build back, uh, build back better. You're talking about a minimum of, of seven trillion dollars. Well, and, and they don't even say, uh, "Oh, we don't have it," but they have an answer for that. It doesn't cost anything. This that money has already been spent. It's the weirdest argument in the world. But they've spent it, and they owe these like close to thirty trillion dollars. We've already spent it, so don't worry about that. And we've borrowed the money. So that's not part of the problem. So that's, that's, that's the way they look at it. So the $7 trillion, but, but they have to plan for the future and they have to keep this gimmick going. And uh, it's pr- pretty amazing. And the combination of this concern for just spending a lot more money due to COVID and, and that the downturn in the markets has, has been this whole, whole thing about uh, how, how are we going to get people to go back to work? Jobs go begging and people are not wanting to work. And uh, it, it, it is a mess. And I think today, Chris, what we ought to do is talk a little bit about, you know, maybe the economic theories that allow this to happen because it didn't happen by accident. It didn't happen because people were careless. It, it, it is a result of a bunch of bad ideas pumped out of our universities for the past, well, I'd say back to the uh, Depression time. And they've been pumped out there, several generations of economists. You know, there are hundreds and hundreds of economists who are on the payroll of the Federal Reserve, just pumping out papers to justify what they're doing. And, uh, you, you, you know, the, the people who believe in uh, the, the modern monetary theory, you know, the far left, oh, they're, they're excited about that because people are coming around. But what I would predict on this, uh, the plans to build back better, better it's not going to work will probably make things much worse you know uh the one thing that has been going on for a long time and i really date it back to the depression because uh we changed our attitude about that uh, uh you know roosevelt takes in the gold which really releases the restraints on the fed to print money but we were still very very rich we had a lot of wealth and uh, we've been in the business of consuming this wealth and also uh, because of the wealth we have been able to maintain uh, 
up until recently a currency that was uh, you know the kingpin and there, there's a day coming when they won't be able to do this because they're spending too much and that's what they they did they ended up you know over that period of time and finally that uh, that system the Bretton Woods broke down because they uh, said that was too much restraint and uh, that in 1971 uh, was was changed so this is um, something that uh, we have to realize that uh, it's the policies that really count and it's the um, acceptance of the government should be doing all these things. You know, that they run a welfare warfare state and it's natural and permissible in a free society, which, is, which it isn't. It's not, that's not part of a free society. And yet that has been accepted. And if you don't go along with this, I mean, if you vote against food stamps or going to war, uh, you're unpatriotic. You know, you're just a terrible person. And uh, that's, that's where we are today because the people have been, been conditioned. But this whole idea, now they're in a struggle because uh, they, were, they did rely on gold and the wealth of the country to keep, keep this uh, uh, money machine going for all these years. But something has, has changed here in the last five, ten years. Is, uh, it's not so easy for us to just print some money and we come out of the recession. And especially in this recession that started uh, with the uh, COVID uh, example of us bailing out everybody there. So this is something that uh, the people have to realize that you, we're, in, we're, we're living in different times now. They're just not going to be able to print money and everybody gets a check. More people got checks this time than ever before. Uh, and they've all been spent by now. And it didn't do anything to building back an economy or restoring our liberties. It didn't do anything. Matter of fact, it made all these things uh, much, much worse. So this is, this is all they're doing is rearranging, uh, you, you know, the, the people who get the money. There's still a lot of wealth and there's a lot of accumulation of wealth um, for special segments, mainly the super rich, because they're getting richer. And that, that is a problem, politically speaking, because people don't like this idea and uh, people are getting very resentful of it. And historically, that's a very bad sign when the people get restless and don't understand things, then they might resort to, to violence or doing other things. But that, this problem isn't complex. It's just that nobody wants to do it. And that is we're spending way too much money and we print too much money and we're destroying the currency. But we created a system that isn't workable. Uh, we've created a system, uh, especially, let's say in the last 10 years, this is especially true. They've taken interest rates and figured low interest rates are good for the economy. That, tells, that sends a signal to the, to the people who build society and invest in hard assets and houses and hotels and all this. Interest rates are low. <clears throat> so they, they did that, and, uh, and, and lo, lo and behold, there was a boom. But right now, it, it's gone. That that system of recovery is gone, and that that has prompted them. Chris for coming up some of the alternatives. They, all they can think of is more money, more more money, more money. Uh, they got the interest rates. Uh, the money is available, and they got the interest rates negative. And uh, yet the only money being spent is sort of the welfare distribution that uh, a larger part goes to the wealthy than to the poor. So that isn't going to work. And the main malfunction there uh, is the fact that they don't understand about interest rates. Interest rates low in a market economy means people are saving money and business people make decisions on it. That's not what we have. We, we don't have savers. We just have uh, Federal Reserve printing money and manipulating interest rates. And guess what that does? It causes the businessman and the bankers to do the wrong thing. They spend more money, run up more debt, and they're not a good judge uh, of what investments should be made. They, uh, they, they, they'll make mistakes, but compared to the government making mistakes, they would be minor compared to that. So this, is, this whole thing. So one thing that really gets me, though, is they know that we have to bail out this debt. We, how are we going to do it? Because it's a sort of a minor uh, uh, partisan issue. Uh, both sides spend all the money. But they're, they're deciding what to do. What, how are we going to handle this debt? So they've come up with this scheme, that, and, and uh, this is part of uh, Biden's scheme and, and part of uh, Build Back Better. He said, look, we can pay off a lot of debt. Uh, why don't we make a platinum coin, and they can, under the law, not the Constitution, they have the authority to mint coins and make them legal tender, and they want to make a, a million dollar, uh, you know, a trillion dollar 
and now, now it's a little bit more, a trillion dollar coin to be used to pay off the debt. Well, I don't think it takes a genius to figure it out, but that is not going to work. The confidence is totally destroyed under those circumstances. But those are the kind of gimmicks coming up, and that's what represents how, how serious our problems are when they come up with those schemes. You know, in, in the 70s, which I remember well, uh, they tinkered like this, and they were looking for the answer, and they printed a lot of money, and uh, they couldn't understand. They were wringing their hands. Well, we don't quite understand this. Uh, when the economy is weak, uh, that means the interest rates should go down, and prices should go down because demand is down. But guess what? Guess what? Prices went up, and interest rates went up, and they finally started using the word stagflation. You know, with a weak economy, and then there's still inflation. Well, the market determines. Uh, you know, it will tell us when there's a, a depression and a deflation, and the economy's turning down. The prices are more in the hands of this consumer. So right now, uh, we, we, we're going to have an option. I tend to think that what we're doing and what they're pretending to do, and if we go along with what uh, this Build Back Better is, that we're going to have an inflationary depression. That's what, and somebody said, oh no, with, with inflation, that's, they've, the Federal Reserve has worked for 10 years just trying to get the inflation up to 2%. And of course, I made fun of that for years because right now it's 10%, and they still won't admit that. So this this is this a whole this is really nonsense about what what they're what they're doing. And uh, the inflation the inflationary depression can be very very bad because the more they print, the higher the prices go. But they addressed this in some of the conversations about um, build back, back better, and and that is that uh, they said that this will lower prices so they know that historically they have to contend with high rising prices if you start dumping off dumping out a lot of money with more debt uh, and the administration said don't worry about it because uh what's going to happen is we're going to use technology chris you talked about technology we're going to regulate prices and if prices are going up too fast we're going to regulate the prices and that could be labor it could be stuff wage and price controls and if you want to see a conclusion, bad conclusion on what they're trying to do, that's what they really uh, are operating with. If they come up with wage and price controls, uh, which will destroy things. So we've never really uh, been in this point before where we had so much inflation, so much weakness in the economy, and so much debt. And you already mentioned about this, these problems are being worldwide. And I, d I do think that uh, you know, the dollar has been dominant in the world now, really since World War II, and it is a worldwide uh, problem. Not only because our military has been all across the world, and and people resent that, but they also that uh, the people people realize that that spending is still very very costly. So that that is a problem that we're going to have, and I I just think that uh, wage and price controls <laughs> will be a terrible disaster. I, I think. The market works better. I mean, that, that, that'll make things worse, but just avoiding that won't solve their problems. They're going to have lots of problems trying to say that everybody's going back and they will gain great wisdom and they will take advantage of interest rates that are negative and they will invest and take all the risk in only the things that will build this country back to where it was 30 or 40 years ago. One thing that I do want to mention is uh, one of their statements in all this, uh, the uh, administration said, well, maybe, uh, maybe we should reassess ourselves about raising taxes. And if we cut some spending, uh, maybe, maybe we won't have to raise taxes. Well, that's political statement. But the taxes, it's practically irrelevant uh, because they're not popular. They're not going to, they're never going to raise, say, an income tax on the lower 50% of the population. But they still might end up paying the tax if people don't understand. What are you talking about? If they don't have much income and they don't have income tax forms, they feel, how are they going to pay the tax? Because of the inflation tax because of the destruction of the money. So they're already complaining. They say, you know, and I'll just use some numbers which uh, probably aren't correct, but uh, if, if last month you paid $2 for a loaf of bread and this month you pay $4 for a loaf of bread, they're yelling and screaming, we need price controls, we need price controls. 
But guess what? It, uh, it, it might have been just the, the inflation tax that's occurring, the devaluation of the dollar. That's where the problem is, and that is what they'll resort to. And, you know, it's not like we don't have examples of how bad it can get, because even today there are several countries in the world that are, have total runaway inflations of tens of thousands of dollars of, of uh, inflationary rate. So it's a, it's a slow learning process because of the political aspect of this, because on the very short run, it comes across as negative. So if people say, what are you doing? We're in trouble and you're gonna cut my benefits? So that, 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 that won't happen. But it also suggests that uh, people who are concerned have to think very seriously about how to protect oneself uh, from what is coming, because I don't think uh, uh, I, I don't think build uh, build build better uh, build new better is is going uh, going to work. So people should be prepared. You know, uh, if they if we get into a survival uh, uh, episode, you know, we're just trying to survive. But that is going to be tough. The only thing that is you know, really is the important issue. And it's probably the least exciting to people, but it better get exciting to a few people. And that is, do we want to live in a free society? Because that makes all the difference in the world. We know what the, uh, the elimination of a lot of, you know, personal liberties during COVID, which still exists, very, very damaging, not only financially, but very damaging psychologically and, you know, uh, all kinds of problems that we get. So this is, uh, this, is, this is something that has to be restored. But like I've said before, our problem is that truth becomes treason if you're living in an empire of lies. And we have to make that very clear. And I think that uh, telling the truth would go a long way to helping us out. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. What to do in such a situation? Inform yourself and keep your financial education strong. We from the Compact Group offer our loyal subscribers a free educational portal with first-hand monetary, financial, and economic knowledge. Enter our invite-only Insider Club by clicking the link below. You will get access to first-class information far earlier than the rest. We have prepared a special deal for all our members where you can access a giant pool of Robert Kiyosaki's financial wisdom for just $1. To find out more, simply click the link below and join our Insider Club absolutely free. But there is more you can and should do. Build up several streams of income. More and more people realize that they have to take their future in their own hands, but they don't know how and where to start. We from Compact offer our Insider Club members unique opportunities. Strengthen your financial muscle and get the edge. Click the link below. Become part of our free insider club. No financial obligations. But there's one important thing you have to know. You have to become active. So do it now. Become active and see you on the other side.